Mike's ready. I've been preparing this message for a while. And, uh, you know, here in the last month, or I guess probably been about a month, Joey and John and we've been talking a lot about discipleship, uh, being disciples for Christ. And during my study time, it, um, Holy Spirit told me, he said, if you want to be a disciple, you got to be a vessel. And we're going to go in depth on being a vessel for God this evening. Um, and um, like I said, I've worked on this for a couple of weeks now. And, uh, you know, when you, I was telling Kristen before I left, when, when, when you do a message, when you prepare a message, that message has to speak to you. It has to speak to you before you can preach it to you, you guys. Because if it doesn't speak to us, I'm just writing it down. I'm just wasting ink. And I can tell you, this, this has really spoke to me in the last couple of weeks. And all the messages we've heard on discipleship uh, that Joey and John has preached on. I want to be a better vessel. I want to be a better vessel for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the title of this message is, is Being a Vessel for God. Our scriptures today, we're going to start out in the Old Testament. I don't know how many people are familiar with this story in the Old Testament. It's, it's kind of lengthy, but it's got a lot of meaning. I didn't know how in-depth this, this story is. But it's 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. It's called the Widow's Olive Oil. Then we're going to be in Ephesians God's masterpiece, Isaiah 64, 8, the work of his hands, and 2 Timothy. Very important verse, 2 Timothy 2, verse 21, a vessel for honorable use. So we're going to get started here. Let's pray real quick. Let me pray, and then we'll get going, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord God, that you will open our eyes and hearts, Lord, to receive this message. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will just speak to me, Lord God. Speak through me, Father God, like you have spoken to me through the nights, Lord God, and kept me awake. Father, I pray you'll just be, be with each and every one of us, Lord God. That we'll search our hearts, Father God, and see. And let us see, Lord God, if we're really that vessel you want us to be. That vessel you, we need to be, Father God, for you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, let's get started here. This scripture is kind of lengthy, so we're going to kind of go through it. First off, you have to ask yourself, what's a vessel? And uh, most of us know what that meaning is, but just to make sure you know what that is, it's a ship or a large boat, a container for holding something. Let me preach to you for a minute. Does that mean anything to you guys? A container for holding something. Come on. Right here. 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Very important. Keep that in your mind. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, Empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. When you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all the vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. He brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full... That she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, a 
Elijah, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and, you and your sons will live on the rest. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes on this scripture and, and what it means to, means to me. Here you have a lady. Her husband had died, and she owes somebody money. So back in those days, if you owe somebody money, they would enslave your sons to pay that debt off. And it could be forever. You could owe them forever. So Elisha was a prophet who followed Elijah. And he basically inherited all the prophecy and the prophet, prophetic stuff that Elijah had from God. So he was basically known as a man of God in that area. So he... This lady come to him and was telling him, hey, they're going to take my sons if I don't pay back this debt. So she, or he, tells her, what do you have in the house? What do you got in your house, guys? She didn't have nothing but one little jar of oil. One little jar. He told her, he said, go out and collect all, as many as you can find. And we know in the Bible, all means all. Search high and low for all the vessels. So she went out. The sons went out, got the vessels. They come back in. And he told her to take that jar of oil. And I assumed it was probably a little jar. And she kept pouring it into the vessel. And kept pouring and pouring a little jar and a lot of vessels. Am I speaking to anyone here tonight? Huh? Listen to me. She filled them all up and run out of vessels. And then, of course, the story goes on to say she goes, pays the debtors, and then her sons live free. Here's the point. God needs vessels. Listen. The problem is not God and his ability. The problem is not in heaven. The problem is having a vessel to pour the miracle into. To pour the oil into the vessel. Amen? Amen. Listen to me. God needs vessels. And he needs a lot of them. If you can't be a vessel for God, you only have one other thing, and that's be a vessel for Satan. I put all these up here today to show you different types of vessels. And when I mean vessels, I mean bodies. God pours into you how much you want. You may want a little bit. You may want a little bit more. You may want a cup size. You may want a pitcher size. But I can tell you right now, if I'm going to get my oil from God, Holy Spirit, I want all I can get. Open yourself up. Listen, when that woman ran out of vessels, can you imagine the feeling? Because she had to know God was multiplying the, the blessing of the oil to pay her debt. So she kept filling and filling, and all of a sudden it stops. If you're going to be a vessel, 110% be a vessel. God cannot use you if you're not going to be a vessel. Again, vessels come in all different shapes and sizes. There's none of us the same. God will give you all you want. He'll give you a pint size or he'll give you a, a 10 gallon cup size or he'll give you a 100 gallon. The choice is yours. Now I will tell you this. Sometimes we got to check our house. We need to check our house and check our vessels. We need to see what we got in the house that God can use for a vessel. Because there may be some stuff in the house that we need to get rid of so the miracle can come in. God can't bless a bad miracle. God can't bless a bad vessel. If you're a dirty, rotten vessel, he's not going to come in. But if you serve him and if you, if you pray to him and you worship him, he's going to pour out his vessel 
into his vessel as much as you can stand, and it's going to overflow onto everybody else. Hallelujah. You know, I, as I prepared this message, I thought of different things in the Bible that were vessels. Go to Noah's Ark. The Ark was a vessel. God put his blessings in there. The animals and Noah and his family and all that. Mm. The Virgin Mary. She was a vessel for God. Amen. She was a vessel for God. Jesus was born into her womb. She was a vessel. You know, I, I don't know about y'all, but as I've grown with the Lord, it'll change the way you walk. When your vessel gets full of Holy Spirit, oh, it'll change you. You ain't going to want to do the same things that you used to do. Most of you guys know my story, and I've got my whole family here. Thank y'all very much. Listen, I had a beautiful upbringing. I got, I got the best family there was. And they're all willing vessels. They're all willing to help, care for, love on. And as some people say, we were drugged. You know where I'm going with this. We were drugged to church. We were drugged to school. We were drugged. And I, and I really appreciate that. Because I can tell you right now, 20 some years ago, my vessel was filled up. And for 20 years I've been serving God as much as I can, all I can. And he just keeps pouring that oil into my vessel. Hey, we, you guys know we've seen people healed. I've prayed for people, and I'm not bragging, but I've prayed for people and watched their bones healed in a heartbeat. Some of this stuff I've never even shared with my family. Brother Joy was up here one day. We prayed for a, a young man. You remember that day? This boy right here, I know, was demon-possessed. There's no doubt in my mind. He had a look like none other. And me and Joy prayed for him, and his eyes crossed. His eyes crossed. I never let up. I had my foot on the gas, and we just kept right on praying. And that demon fleed. Listen, guys, if you fill your vessel with the oil, if you fill your vessel with the Holy Spirit, it pushes out all the garbage. The garbage can't stay in because the, the garbage won't be in there if, if the, it's full of oil, if it's full of the Holy Spirit. You know, just here most recently, I shared this with you guys. When uh, Brother Joy and Amanda called, said, come and pray for my mom. Said she don't know if she's going to make it or not. And that lady I baptized right there in her, in her house, in her recliner. And I guarantee you, when I left, her oil was running over. Because she was smiling from ear to ear. And the other part of it was, my vessel got full. So listen to me. When, you're, when your vessel is full of the oil, when it's full of the Holy Spirit anointing, it'll overflow and bounce off into everybody else. But God needs vessels. If there's no vessels, you're defeated. No vessels, you're defeated. Oh, you can have a vessel. There's a lot of vessels in the world right now that are evil. Look at what's going on in the world. The murders and the rapes and the killings and the, the mass suicides and all that. Tell me those vessels ain't full of evil. Dirty old. Dirty old. Oh, oh fried up chicken oil. Huh? Huh? Fried up chicken oil. Burnt. Score stool. I love chicken. So anyway. But you let that dirty oil get into that body and dirty things going to come out of it. But. Come on now, but God, listen to me. There was a time in my life I was a dirty vessel. Hmm? And, the, and I'll never forget, that dirty vessel was full of unforgiveness. Of things that went on in my marriage. 
And I can say that because I'm proud to say that that oil, that pure olive oil pushed out and all the dirty stuff. And that night I was delivered for that unforgiveness. Amen. So, listen, some of you guys may have some, some, some dirty oil in you. Some old burnt scored chicken oil. But I can tell you right now, I know a man right now, his name is Jesus, can push that oil right out. It'll be gone. Pure. Pure. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good works He planned for us long ago. Listen to me. God don't create nothing bad. God can't lie. God can't steal. God can't cheat. God's not going to shorten anybody. God's going to bless you like you've never seen before. And God's going to give you all you want. He's going to give you so much that you can't stand it. There was a couple nights, two or three nights on this message that I was preparing. I preached it five hours, I know, in the bed. I don't know if I ever went to sleep. I mean, I got so wound up one night, I, didn't, I don't know what time it was I went to bed. Because I kept thinking about what can I say to you guys. God, take control of this. Pour out blessings through me to pour out onto y'all. When you get set free, and when your, your body, your temple is full, we're going to get into it in a minute, when your body is full of that oil, of the Holy Spirit anointing oil, there's nothing you can do. You don't fear nothing. You know, I used to, I used to have a lot of fear on me. I've had, a, a, and you can ask Melissa, I've had a shoulder aching for three or four years now. Tingling in the side of my face. Just, it's just crazy. I don't know what it is. They say it's a nerve problem. But I don't fear it anymore. And I mean, I have some crazy feelings. But I just keep pleading the blood of Jesus Christ on me. Listen, at the, at the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. Oh. Isaiah 64, 8. But now, Lord, our Father... We are the clay and you are the potter. And we are all the work of your hands. I know you guys have heard this. And I know you've, you've seen this in the book. The potter and the clay story. I think it's in Jeremiah. I believe it is. And uh, Jeremiah 8 maybe. Something like that. I urge you guys to read that. Listen. That story goes on to say. Jeremiah went to the, uh, the Lord told Jeremiah to go to this guy's house that was was making a clay uh, a clay pot, and when he got there, basically to kind of I guess paraphrase a little bit, he was molding that pot, and it was marred just a little bit. Sometimes we get marred in this old world. Sometimes we get kind of side cocked. You know, the vase kind of gets a little bit lumpy on one side or heavy on the other side. But God can take that vase. Being the potter that he is, and he can make it a perfect vase. A perfect, round, beautiful vase. But you got to let him. you got to be willing to surrender. Surrender. If you want the oil of Holy Spirit, you've got to be able to surrender so God can mold and shape you. If he molds and shapes you into that willing vessel that you want to use, then it'll be a perfect vessel for God. Then you have the courage, then you have the wisdom and the discernment to go out and spread God's word. Forty years ago, I couldn't do this. I know people think I'm crazy because I'm up here. Forty years ago, I couldn't do this. I'm not the same man I was 40 years ago. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.21 Therefore, we know that if God puts therefore in the Bible, it's there for a reason. Listen to me. If anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. Set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, 
and ready for every good work. Listen to me. We've all shared things in this church. We all know, some of us know people more than we know others, but you can't be a vessel. You can't be a vessel for God if you're living like the world. You can't be a vessel for God if you're out here living like a heathen. You know what? You can't be a vessel for God if you're out here just living in sin like crazy, just running wild in, in the world. You got to cleanse your house out. You got to cleanse your temple. You know, the Bible says that your body is a temple made unto God. It is a holy place, it's set apart. And what we put into this temple is what we get out of this temple. The more we spend time in the world, our temple gets destructive. But the more we spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ, mm, the oil will keep flowing. Listen, God's blessings never stop. But you have to allow him to bless you. It says, when you ask for something, believe. Believe that it has happened. Believe that God is going to do it and it will be done. His word says that. Oh, I need a Bible. Hold on, I got mine. Listen. This Bible right here. If it says it, that settles it. There's no stretching it. There's no changing it. From front to back, cover to cover, from Genesis all the way to Revelations, if God said it, that settles it. If he tells you that if you turn a backflip, he's going to bless you, I guess turn a backflip. You know what? If he says, I'm going to fill your vessel with oil, if you'll just give me to yourself, give yourself to him. He's going to fill it with oil. But if you want part of the world, he's going to take his hands off, and he will. He'll let you get all the world you want, just like the prodigal son. What about the prodigal son's vessel? Huh? How murky did it get? He was eating with the pigs, right? He was eating with the swine. And finally, he realized, he's like, man, this is crazy. I could go back to my father's house. I can go back to my father and he'll, he'll, he'll cleanse my temple. He'll cleanse my vessel. He'll fill me back up with oil. Listen, the potter don't never give up. If he makes a, the potter don't make no mistakes. But if you make the mistake by the choices we make, the potter will fix it. He will reform that bowl. We've all got past. We've all done things that we're not proud of. I've done a lot of things in my life I'm not proud of. But thank God nowadays when I do something wrong, God convicts me. The potter convicts me. And then he reshapes me. He, he makes me anew. He makes me a pure vessel. Every day, a pure vessel. Short message. But it's a powerful message message listen God has got to have some vessels we can't keep going on being these little bitty vessels for God we're either sold out or we're not I'm sold out I don't know about you guys I'd like for you guys to repeat after me for just a second Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill my vessel. That declaration unto God. Mm. Every day, we should accept the anointing of Most High Jesus Christ. The oil. The oil in this story is the most important thing. The containers come in all shapes and sizes. But the oil, the miracle that God wants to put into you. He's got to have an open vessel. He can't have a dirty vessel. He can't have a vessel that's got all this garbage in it. He can't. 
Some of us has got some garbage in there. I bet if we really do some soul searching, I guarantee we got some garbage in here. Guarantee it. Search the innermost part of your soul. Every day I find a little bit more garbage. No more. Every time I see get I feel, feel a piece of garbage, I rebuke it. I don't want it. Every day I want to try to live for God as much as I can. Make me a pure and clean vessel. God's got to have a pure and clean vessel to work through. You know, Elisha in that story was a pure vessel. Elijah was a pure vessel. Look at the vessel of Paul. Saul of Tarsus was a murderer. And when God converted him, he became Paul. He changed his vessel. God, the Holy Spirit, anointed Saul and made Paul. And Paul became this willing vessel. And look what he done. He wrote two-thirds of the Bible, or uh, quite a bit of it. I can only hope and pray that I'm just a little inkling of that, of a vessel for God. I want you guys to ask yourself, as we get ready to play this song, am I a container for trash? Or am I a container for treasure? Amen. Listen, I don't want no more trash. Trash hurts. But when we feel the love, when you feel just a touch, remember the woman that touched his garment and that power come out of God? You know, the, the lady that had the bleeding disorder and, and she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. That vessel instantly was healed. I got one more thing and I'm going to close. This is a good one. Satan, Satan, he tried to kill Jesus Christ, put him on tree, put him on cross, amen? Jesus Christ, we know, was the vessel. Remember, when the vessel's full, you can't contain the vessel. They laid our vessel in a tomb, and guess what? You can't contain that vessel. Three days later, he come up out of that grave, amen? <laughs> Huh? You can't contain it. When God fills your, your vessel with the oil, when He fills you with the Holy Spirit, you can't contain it. You got to share it, David. You know how it is. You just got to keep sharing. I guess that's why I got so wound up. And the more I preach, I get even more wound up. So I don't know what's going on. But Holy Spirit will anoint you to no end. Your prayer life will be become bigger, stronger, faster. Your reading of the word, you'll be able to understand it more. But you've got to be willing to open that vessel and let Holy Spirit in. Open it up. Don't be scared. What's there to be scared of with Jesus? What's there to be scared of? Be, to be scared of God. He wants the best for you. He wants the best for your vessel. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. God, we thank you for being the potter in our lives, Father God. And molding and shaping us, Father God, into that vessel you want us to be. God, continue to shape us each and every day till you call us home. And Father, when we get home, we will be that perfect vessel. That perfect glorified body because your word says so. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen.